Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we're taking a look at the Ray 24 CA from Sterling by Music Man. Sterling have been on the market for a long time and they make between 300, now up to over a thousand, but it used to be like around the 600 kind of mark uh, bases. Now these are Indonesian made music mans. These are Indonesian, <laughs> These are Indonesian made bases licensed by Music Man, famous for the Stingray and the Sterling, and obviously Sterling being the name of this whole brand. It's called the Ray 24CA, this one, but it still says Stingray on the top, which is really nice. So in the Sterling range, different price ranges. You've got the Sub Series, which is your between two, 300 pounds. Then you go up to the Ray 24, which is your kind of five, 600, and then upwards and beyond you start getting into all the roasted maple necks and all of that. I can't remember the exact names of the models. I should have looked it up beforehand, but you know, I'm just doing this on a whim. As you know, I don't like to spend a lot of money. So I was looking into the sub-series initially, but I heard a saw a few reviews that the step up to the Ray 24 is so worth it and that you get this higher output, cleaner sound and the electronics are a bit better. So I bit the bullet and went for the more expensive one. Now, I say bit the bullet, I got this second hand um, for the price of a new sub-series one, so I think I've done really well on this one. I want to take a moment to talk about second-hand guitars and more specifically posting second-hand guitars. Because I shop a lot in the more affordable range, a lot of people don't want to bother with the shipping so it's only collection only. Sometimes I have to instruct people on how to post items. And I'm sad that I didn't instruct this seller how to post this item. He sounded pretty confident when we were messaging, but when it arrived, it was very apparent that they had no clue. <laughs> they had no idea how to, how to package something safely. I'm gonna put on the screen now a little video clip from my Instagram story where I documented receiving this bass. Head over there, give me a follow, and you can see all these extra little behind the scenes bits and also contribute into what content you see on this channel. I received an email, said, oh, your parcel's been delivered. I thought, brilliant, I know exactly what that is. Went in um, to where it had been delivered and I couldn't see it. I was expecting a box, a big box, and I couldn't see it anywhere. Then tucked away in the corner, I saw it, there it was, just a guitar shaped bin bag uh, with some tape around it. To my shock and horror, uh, in the video you can see that I could actually feel the body and the knobs through the bin bag, of course. Don't worry, it had a fragile note on it, so you know, that's fine. Couriers really listen to fragile notes and know that it's fragile, it could break, so we better not chuck it around. So, I open it up. I jokingly said, oh, it looks like a duvet cover. It was a duvet cover, a suspiciously black stained duvet cover. Underneath that were five tote bags wrapped around the neck, which, you know, great. I can reuse those and be all green. Then there was a layer of bubble wrap. This is the right part, the bubble wrap. Great, should do that anyway. And then that was it. And of course, lo and behold, exactly where I could feel the body and the knobs. Ugh. Make sure I don't hit it on the ceiling here. We have massive crack in the lacquer. I'll do some extra shots so you can, who knows if you'll be able to see this. Fantastic, eh? Love it. There's even a bit of bubble wrap and duvet left in there, which is really nice. Really nice touch, really adds to the tone. I was expecting one of the machine heads to be damaged as well, just because on this side, all three of them can take the brunt of the force, whereas on this side, it's just this one that's going to get hit if it was damaged in transit. And yeah, it is a little bit loose. So really really think hard about how you're packaging your guitars and if you can find a box at least one box to package it in it makes a world of difference so please please be safe when you're sending these packages anyway let's move on to the tones shall we 
So this base is active, which means we've got a nine volt battery in the back, which powers the two band preamp that's on board. Now the knobs, we've got one volume, a treble boost and cut, and a bass boost and cut. Both of these have got notches in the middle to show you where it's flat. So all of the clips recorded are using the Line 6 HX Stomp. I'm using the Galleon Kruger. I'm using the Galleon Kruger. I am using the Galleon Kruger. I'm using the Galleon Kruger amp, Ampeg Cab, and with the Sans Amp model on there as well. Even when flat, it sounds phenomenal. I love the clarity that you can get out of this bass. A slight upgrade from the sub-series, we've got an improved bridge, which just, look, it's subtle, but it looks so much better. And a truss rod adjustment and the neck. I can't remember if the sub-series has this as well, but I wish every bass had this. The amount of times I've had to faff around with an Allen key up the top of the neck, it's just a pain. So having it at the bottom is just such a bonus. This model is the Butterscotch Blonde one with the maple neck. They also do it in the Lake Placid Blue with a rosewood neck and also uh, the rosewood fretboard on a Sunburst version as well, which they all look fantastic. Looks in a guitar are pretty important to me just because you, you're gonna wanna, you've got to want to pick it up and play it. and. There's nothing more I love than walking in a room and going, oh, damn, that looks nice. I initially wanted the black on black version. I think that's just a classic Stingray look, which I love with the maple neck, but they didn't do that in the Ray 24. I wanted the quality over the looks in that department. So I decided to get the Butterscotch Blonde because it had the maple neck as well, which gives you that tiny bit brighter sound, which I really like. Um, I just think it looks really smart with the headstock as well on these Sterlings. I think it looks even better in person than it does online. Playability wise, one of my favourite things about Stingrays and Music Mans are the necks. So slim and fast. I've only played a real Music Man Stingray once, I think, and I was blown away by the neck, and this is no exception. The neck is really slim. It's a satin finish on the back, so it's really fast and easy to play. 
At this price range, you wouldn't be expecting any shark fret edges, and that's not the case here. That's not the case, or it is the case? What am I saying? There are no shark fret edges. That's what I want to say. The overall build quality is just fantastic, and the sounds, as you would have heard, are amazing. Because you've just got the one humbucker, I think you're kind of limited in the range of different sounds you can get, but it just suits every single style. Whether you're using a pick, fingers, or slap, it just owns every single style. The first day I had this bass, I was just blown away by the clarity of the notes. And I think that's something that Stingrays just do so well. Let me know what you think of the sound of this bass in the comment section below, or we'll have a listen to how it sounds distorted as well. If you want Music Man tones and don't want to spend well over a thousand pounds, definitely, definitely consider these ones. Because although limited in perhaps the color range, if that's what you're after, they're definitely, definitely worth the money. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button for even more content in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.